<sighs> hey guys, Thunder E here. Now, if you're wondering why I die so much, well, you can ask Daniel that. But this is the brand new Samsung Odyssey OLED G8. Now, this is an OLED gaming monitor, and it's a 34 inch monitor, and I think a lot of people will like that. So, I decided to make a gaming setup right here for you guys to check out. And this monitor actually takes a nice center place on here. I've got a couple of things on the setup, including a brand new gaming PC I just built, thanks to our friends at ASUS and NZXT, as well as also some uh, desk speakers and uh, a brand new uh, gaming headset. Plus, I did actually get that keyboard from Click and Brew in Malaysia. But anyway, let's go ahead and start, take a look at this monitor itself. As I mentioned, 34 inches, resolution is 3040 by 1440. This is a lovely looking OLED monitor, uh, 1800 hour curve radius, so which means you can see everything around you, it looks pretty nice. And also it's one that can of course raise up and down, tilt, and I like the base. I like the clearance of the base because it allows for you to put in a sound bar if you choose to, or in my case, I do have two desk speakers I can put on the side. Now, we've seen uh, a big trend in moving to larger monitors, 57, 49, 55 inches. This is 34 and I do like it because it sits really well within the space you have, especially for different desk sizes. And it's something that I think a lot of people would appreciate. Now, in terms of ports, what does this monitor actually bring to the table? You've got a couple of USB Type-C ports at the back, as well as also a mini display port, which is something that I do not like that much because I prefer a standard DisplayPort or a full HDMI. I don't know why Samsung didn't go that route. I figured they wanted to make it thinner and lighter, but I've seen monitors that have actually done that. So that's a little dig on this here. Now the monitor has some very simple controls, uh, which you can use through the remote control. It does come with a remote. I do like monitors that have remotes, but this one has a little bit of convoluted functionality. So if I wanted to go to some of the monitor settings, I do have to press and hold the play button, which brings up this game menu bar. And in that bar, I can do some cool things. I can of course change my picture mode from standard to RTS. FPS mode, things like that. And I can also go into the game settings and this takes me into more of the monitor settings, but it's still not as traditional as you would expect. Now, because this is a standard Samsung remote control, as you know what Samsung does, Samsung has built in, of course, it's Tizen OS into this, which allows you to, of course, customize and use some of the other features here. So I can hit the home button and this takes me to of course, my general standard TV menu that you see on any Samsung TV. And I have a couple of options here. I do have, of course, uh, my standard apps for media, and then I have a workspace, which allows me to either connect, of course, a PC or Samsung text, which is cool, that is nice. And I also have the Game Center. Now, the Game Center is pretty cool because if your gaming PC is off or you don't want to turn it on, or you just don't have a powerful gaming PC, you can use game streaming services on here. So things like GeForce Now, as well as Lunar and Xbox Game Pass are available. And it's cool that I can pick up my Xbox controller, go ahead, power up Game Pass, get into a game like FIFA 2023, score some goals, enjoy gameplay and jump out, and then jump into something like Netflix and watch One Piece for all the One Piece fans out there. The show is actually pretty decent. And uh, and then, you know, watch a YouTube video. Now, you're going, okay, does this have built-in speakers? Yes, it does. And Samsung says these speakers are pretty solid, give you an overall robust experience, but let's take a quick listen to how well they sound. I'm a bit of a history buff, which by the way, that is. Yeah, it's really good. It's loud, it's crisp. You can hear the space battles well. It does a really good job. The speakers are decent. Um, I think they do a good job if you don't have any other option, whether your headsets are not working or you don't have speakers on there. But in terms of speakers, I do have the relay speakers from NZXT. These are desk speakers. They've got that nice studio looking style to them, all white. Um, and they sound really good. So why don't you take a listen to those and see how well they do. Suddenly they were everywhere. Bounty hunters? No, Pinkertons. It was crazy. Raining bullets. And if you don't want to use the relay speakers, you can go ahead and try the relay headset. 
as well as also the Switch mic, which is a nice combination, especially if you're doing a lot of game streaming, uh, using the headset and basically managing your, uh, you know, your game chat as well as also your game volume altogether. So a nice combo to actually pair with this monitor here. Now, of course, power and everything is my gaming PC, which I built with the help of, of course, ASUS, as I mentioned earlier, and NZXT. ASUS supplied uh, the the Prime uh, motherboard, as well as also the Tough 7900 XT uh, uh, graphics card. While well, NZXT, of course, applied the case, as well as also uh, all the other accessories you see here. I do have 64 gigabytes of RAM from Kingston, two terabytes of storage, and the CPU is a Ryzen 7900 uh, CPU. So of course, it's an all AMD machine. So what kind of performance am I getting and how does that look on this display? Now, this is where having that kind of performance pairs really well with what this display can do. Uh, this is a QD OLED display, so which means your blacks, your colors, are rich and vibrant, you're getting HDR 400, you're also getting performance that really matches what the game representation should look like. So whether I'm playing games like, of course, Doom Eternal, which has a lot of colors, as well as also dark environments, shows up really well on this gaming monitor. And also I'm getting some really crazy high refresh rates because of this gaming PC. Then I move over to something like Red Dead Redemption, where there's a nice, a lot of nice scenery. Uh, this scenery has a lot of snow, a lot of particles in the environment. That should push the system well, but the frame rates are doing well. But also you can see the separation in the colors. Now, this, this monitor also helps in your gameplay because you've got a refresh rate of 175 hertz and a response time of 0.03 milliseconds, which is especially useful if you're playing Call of Duty Warzone. Some of that, of course, uh, fast-paced action and gaming experience really goes a long way with what this monitor can actually do. And of course, finally, games like uh, Starfield, which everyone is playing right now, luscious environments, big universe. You can see how well this monitor takes that to the very next level. Now, in terms of customization, you do have an LED ring at the back, which you can customize with uh, different colors. And you have seamless integration with smart things on your smartphone, allowing you to control the monitor directly from the device. So you can switch to your apps like Netflix or back again to your PC. You also have camera sharing, allowing you to enjoy your camera features directly on your monitor used as a webcam for video calls, as well as smart calibration, allowing you to calibrate the monitor the way you want it to look, allowing you to go from, of course, something more vivid to maybe something more muted, but you can select what you wanna do directly from your mobile device. So let me know what you guys think about the, uh, the Samsung uh, Odyssey OLED G8 and what it brings to the table. If there's anything else that you liked in this setup, let me know. I know some of you are looking at my keyboard. This is not something that I bought from a store. This is something that I bought from a store. How did I say that? <laughs> so, so I woke up one morning and Jesus just walked in and he brought the keyboard and he was like, yo, you want a game? Want to get better scores? <laughs> Now, some of you are looking at that gaming keyboard and going, where did you get it? Well, this one's a little different from everything else. I found a coffee shop in Penang, Malaysia called Click and Brew, where you can walk in, get coffee, some snacks, and also build out your own mechanical gaming keyboard. Lots of stuff. I have the video up on Instagram, so guys, go check it out. But uh, you can also order it online. I'll leave the link for you as well. So thank you very much, guys, and always enjoy your entertainment.